with your squad welcome back to the channel so you girls sitting down we're doing a sit down video today because i'm doing an influencer q a so i asked you guys on instagram like a month ago it was like almost a month ago what were some questions that you have about being an influencer am i an influencer or am i a content creator i think i like content creator better than influencer i'm asking all you guys questions all about that i'm kind of whispering i'm trying not to get too loud because the boys are upstairs taking a nap but your girl gotta work if you guys want to learn more about being an influencer continue watching if you're not already subscribed to my channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn on notifications I feel so weird talking with these nails. I can't wait to get my nails done. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you can be notified every single time your girl posts a new video. <laughs> Let's get into it. How do you gauge what the viewers want? Um, an easy way to gauge what the viewers want. I mean, you don't know exactly what they want, but you can kind of tell by the views. Like my vlogs, my vlogs get more views, so I know that you guys enjoy watching the vlogs more versus my hair videos. So if you look at your views and you see that less people are interested in a topic because they, they don't choose to watch it, that kind of gives you an idea of uh, what content to create. And also, if you want to hear from your subscribers and get their input, you can do like little polls on Instagram and ask them what kind of videos you want to see. And usually when I do that, they say vlogs, more vlogs or routines and things like that. So definitely ask your subscribers like directly and they'll give, they'll tell you exactly what you need to know. How do you get sponsorships? Do you go after brands you want to team with? Um, most of the time. Okay. So. So one way that you can get sponsorships is brands reach out to you and that's like a main way that I get sponsorships. They, Cause I know that they wanna work with me and it's just easier because they're already interested in me. So um, just brands reaching out to me and the way that you can get brands to reach out to you is to do similar content. So if you wanted like to get sponsorships from clothing brands, then you gotta do trial hauls. You're gonna have to spend some of your own money to do it in the beginning and then later on the brands will see like, okay, this is what they do and this is how many views they're getting from doing this and then they'll want to sponsor you. Like baby content, I do a lot of baby content, just regular. So of course baby sponsors are going to want to work with me. So they look at what type of stuff you're already doing and then that's when the sponsors will reach out to you. So a lot of times they reach out to you, but if you don't have that much of a following, you can definitely reach out to them. Like it don't hurt to try. I need to like make up something to reach out to brands because I really don't do it that much, but I do reach out to them on a platform called Aspire IQ, which is a good resource. If you are even a, a small creator, big creator, whatever, you can find plenty of brands. That's where I get my uh, sponsorships whenever I work with HelloFresh and just a few other um, brands, Aspire IQ. So basically it's just kind of like um, a platform and they have a whole bunch of different brands and they tell you their budget, well, their budget range or whatever and exactly what they want. And then you just send them a little uh, proposal tell them how much you want to get paid from it and then you guys can negotiate and then they send you the terms it's it's like really easy i love aspire iq that's like one of the easiest platforms for finding sponsorships what else did i use oh i use magic links magic links is like an affiliate linking thing so you know, guys know how sometimes i put where i got a product from i may put a magic link in it so that means that if you guys click that link then I'll get like a little bit of commission from it so magic links is like that type of platform like you get commission from when people click links but also they can send you sponsorships for example like let's say I'm telling you guys about a sippy cup that I love I may put the magic link and you guys click the link and then they see that a lot of people are clicking the link and then they may send me a sponsorship that's like baby related or something like that so that's another way I get sponsorships magic links they they come through with the sponsors for real what platforms can I get paid collaboration so that was the answer to the next questions platforms for sure that I recommend is aspire IQ and um, also magic links but that's not really i say magic links magic links and aspire iq do you think you will continue to do youtube in the future as long as possible not a question but i missed the trophy cooking show i'm gonna bring it back i'm gonna bring it back are there a lot of people trying to tell you what your child needs mm, not really no i get some like suggestions every now and then like but no, it don't be a lot of people just tell me like, you need to do this, you need to do that. No, I got a really good community. You guys are amazing. Like I look at other YouTubers in their comment section and the stuff that they go through, I'm like, Ugh. 
When are you having another baby? That don't got nothing to do with influencing. That don't got nothing to do with being an influencer. What camera do you use? So the camera that I'm using right now that I'm filming on is the Sony ZV-1. I definitely recommend this camera if you guys are a vlogger. Not necessarily if you do a lot of sit down videos. I mean, it looks, I think it looks pretty good with this sit down video, we'll see. But uh, if you are a vlogger, I definitely recommend this camera. This camera is amazing. I like the fact that at the top of the screen, it tells you how many minutes you have left on your memory card. My other cameras that I had didn't do that. Um, it has like the red light in the front so it can tell you if you are recording at the moment, which is great because you don't wanna just be recording the whole time your stuff ain't even recording. Um, it does have a side screen, but you get used to it. I used to have a camera that had the flip up screen. I had the Sony, the Sony G's, what is it? G7X or something like that? G I put the name on the screen, but that one is a really good one too, but this one is better. How and when did the sponsors start coming in? So I first got sponsors maybe like three, probably like three, two or three, maybe like three or four months after I started filming. Cause when I first started filming, I was doing like hair videos and hair sponsors are the easiest sponsors to get. They're just the easiest sponsors to get. Um, so I think my first sponsor was her giving hair. That's why I still rock with them. I still mess with them. And it was very low. I think, what was it? It was like very low, like $50, $100, $50, I think. <laughs> that, that was like so long ago. But yeah, um, we've definitely grown from $50 sponsorships. How are you consistent with the boys and your man and YouTube? That's a good question. It's kind of like how I juggle it all. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I really do a great job of being consistent with everything. One thing that I need to work on is just managing everything. When does YouTube start paying you and do you make good money off of YouTube? So for me, I think I got my first YouTube check like maybe like three months in. Yeah, maybe like at the third month. And I think it was, you had to make at least $100 and that's what, how much I made. I think it was like a hundred and something dollars that I got paid for my first check. Back then you automatically monetized so you didn't really have to do anything, but now you have to have like a certain amount of watch time and stuff like that. So the, the rules have changed a little bit. Oh, and do you make good money off of YouTube? Yes, I make good money off of YouTube considering that I don't get as many, like if I got with YouTube, it depends on the views. So I make, y'all know I average at about 10, 15, 20K, 20K on a really, really, really good day. But that's like my average. But um, for me in my position, how many views I get, I make pretty good money. Like I make enough money that I can, I make about the same or more than I did as a teacher. So that's pretty good money. This is a good one. How long do you continue to bring in revenue for videos that you post? So no matter how old my videos are, I still get money from it if people still watch it. Uh, a lot of the videos, they don't get that many views. Like once they're old, they're forgotten about. But some of the ones that are kind of viral, like they got millions of views or hundreds of thousands of views, they still give me money. When in public, do people notice the boys and come up to them? Um, a few times we've been noticed in public, but they are respectful. Like all the people I met, they were super respectful. They wouldn't just come up to the kids like, oh, is that Terrell? Like, no, they'll say hey to me first and then they'll see the boys and be like, oh, that's them, they look so cute, blah, 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 blah. We've had really good experiences when it came to meeting supporters, which is great. The next question is how long does it take to edit? For me, that just depends on how long the video is. Like vlogs for me take a little bit longer, sit down videos, not so much. So I guess on average, I would say it takes me from two to four hours and it depends on how i'm feeling in my editing mood like if i want to throw in a whole bunch of um like overlays and stuff like that that takes longer and like music and tr like just if i want to make a really good video that's gonna take longer but if i just want to clip put some clips in two hours still because i my editing process i i edit and i just cut and clip and cut and clip the stuff that's just unnecessary so that's my first round of edits and then my second round of edits i go back i add music i add overlays i add all the stuff that y'all see on the screens whatever if i'm talking about something i want to add on the screen i go back and i do that so that takes a little more time but i say overall my editing takes about two to four hours did you do anything special to grow a following or did one video go viral 
why did I read it like that? Like I can't read. Um, I think I got a following back when Instagram, like when natural hair videos were like a little bit more popular and more people were doing them. Back then in the Instagram videos, I used to post those a lot and I used to use a whole bunch of natural hair hashtags, like a whole bunch. I don't think it's recommended to do that anymore, but I used to put a whole bunch of hashtags. So I used to show up on all of the hashtag pages. And um, if a lot of people watched it in my video, it would be like the top on the hashtag pages. And a lot of those natural hair pages would repost me and that would give me a ton of followers. And then um, those followers would go to YouTube. So that's how I got a lot of followers though. Back, back when all of natural hair pages were like way more popular. What's the most lucrative aspect of being an influencer? That's a nice question. I like how you worded that. The most lucrative aspect. I'm guessing you, you're saying like, as far as money source, which money source brings in the most money? Sponsorships, sponsorships, sponsorships. But how to feel more natural on camera? It takes a lot of practice, like especially me, I'm just already a nervous person. <laughs> like I, my nerves be bad, y'all, my nerves be bad. But um, just remember that it's only you. Like nobody's in this room but me. When you're filming a video, nobody's there. Nobody at all. People gonna watch it later, but at the moment, nobody's there. So I try to just remember that so I don't put so much pressure on myself. And also, to help yourself feel more natural, you have to edit more video, film more videos, edit more videos, put more videos out, and eventually you'll just get used to it. It's just, you just gotta get used to it. So I used to talking on camera, because when I first started, I was stutter, stutter McGee. What are the challenges of being a full-time influencer and a mom of two? Um, I guess the challenges is just how to balance it all. That's the hardest part, balancing it all, because when you're at home, like if you go to work, you can send your kids to like daycare and stuff, and you know that during this time, this is when I'm gonna work, and then when I come home, I can be come home and be, be a mom. And I, when you are doing YouTube, like it's like you're working and you're being a mom and you're doing home stuff all at the same time. It's good because you can manage it all at the same time. Like I can film a vlog of me cooking and cleaning and doing mom stuff. But also like when it comes to like the editing and the other aspects of it, like talking with brands and stuff, it's kind of hard to find the time because you're like tired. So yeah, that's the hardest part of it all. Like just managing it all and trying to balance it all. Another question I get, because a lot of people always want to ask about money, is how do we make money? Um, the different sources are YouTube, like I kind of talked about that a little earlier. We get paid from um, ads, the ads that you guys see in the front of the videos, which is like a very small portion of my income. So that, um, also sponsorships. Also we get paid from affiliate links. So anytime you guys see me linking something, I get to little money. I probably get like 10, 15, 20% off of that. I hope I answered everything. If you, if I didn't, leave your comment, your questions down below, and maybe I can do a part two. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.